20 years now, the Stronghold series has fortified itself in an interesting place somewhere between a city builder and a more traditional real-time strategy. Stronghold Warlords continues this tradition with a new flavor as it takes us, for the first time in the series, to the battlefields of ancient and medieval East Asia. But as an RTS, it feels like it's still living in the mists of the past. And the city building, while it can be an interesting and almost zen little puzzle, often feels at odds with the goal of straightforwardly conquering your enemies. The biggest, often refreshing, difference between a Stronghold game and, say, Warcraft or Starcraft is in how it pushes you to think about space. You're going to be turning an open plot of land into an impressive, thriving, walled city, assuming no one raises it to the ground first. And it's not just the availability of natural resources you need to worry about. Decisions like placing your main stockpile close to resource collection areas can have a big effect on the efficiency of your economy, and keeping your people happy later on will partly depend on how many of your buildings are in the radius of temples. You really have to try and picture how everything is going to fit together on top of building out your defenses to maximize your home field advantage. It does a good job of scratching that Tetrisy itch and making long-term planning pay off. That's been true of the series as a whole, but Warlords has added a new wrinkle in that you can choose whether to keep your people in line through love or fear. One building chain will let you construct torture racks and other unsubtle symbols of oppression, which make your workers work faster but demoralize your armies and reduce your popularity. The other offers creature comforts that will inspire the troops and endear you in the hearts of the commoners, but also lowers their resource output since they're spending too much time playing, I don't know, lawn darts or whatever. I enjoyed the tension that this created because I could see how much productivity I could squeeze out of my people and also keep each new stronghold from feeling like a repeat of the last. Keeping happiness at least somewhat positive is important, because it's the only way your population will grow, and raising taxes to afford higher tier units is only possible if you're giving something back in return, like more rice rations or fancy new silk duds. This helps your cities feel like a bit more than just a collection of peasants dumping gold in a pile to fund your armies, like in a traditional RTS. But once those armies get on the move, that's sort of all it boils down to. Combat in Stronghold Warlords is at its best during sieges, whether you're on the attacking or the defending side. All the modular pieces you can construct your walls and towers from allow for some interesting and clever setups to maximize your advantages against a larger force, especially if you know a thing or two about how real castles were designed. When figuring out how to take on an enemy fortress, probing for weak spots, and choosing your opportunities carefully, can be exciting as well. Field battles just aren't as interesting, though. There is a huge gap in movement speed between the lower tier skirmishers and the tanky Imperial troops you can get later in the tech tree, which does allow a savvy commander to outmaneuver a more potent army and win the day. But overall, these fights are very, like, old school Age of Empires in their pacing and scale. It's not terrible, it just feels very behind the times compared to more recent RTSs like Northgard or Total War. And the art doesn't help. While the grand keeps and shining pagodas are detailed and attractive, these low polygon, flat looking unit models could be outshone by something like the original Company of Heroes, which came out almost 15 years ago. Each of these six single player campaigns, which are around 6 to 10 hours long, take you to a different time and place in history. But their heroes only seem like they're leading distinct factions because most missions limit what you can build. In multiplayer and skirmish versus AI, on the other hand, with everything unlocked, that distinction is lost. Not only are the unit rosters identical for each army, your Imperial Swordsman will always speak Chinese, even if you're playing as the Vietnamese or the Mongols. Genghis Khan can hire ninja and samurai units just as easily as his rival, the Shogun, can get Mongol horse archers. There's a little bit of visual variation in some of the architecture, but overall, it's a weirdly homogenous abstraction of a setting that spans almost an entire continent and over a thousand years of history. At least at least the mission objectives have good variety and nod to some interesting historical battles. 
When I'm laying out a city or defending it from invaders, Stronghold Warlords is satisfying and almost chill, but it's a better castle builder than it is in RTS, and aside from a kind of aimless free build mode, there's not much of a way to ignore those more lackluster elements. The dated unit models just aren't at all nice to look at and make me wonder if a game of this budget wouldn't have gotten more bang for their buck going with a more stylized art direction. The historically based campaigns have some cool missions, but the fact that every faction boils down to a weird amalgamation of such a broad swath of history and geography and skirmish and multiplayer feels like a missed opportunity. I don't regret the time I spent with Stronghold Warlords, but I wouldn't be devastated to have missed it either. For more historical Asian strategy, check out our review of Total War Three Kingdoms. And for everything else, stick with IGN.